Perseverance is a robotic field geologist equipped with a toolkit that's better than any available to a human geologist on Earth. It uses a drill and a braiding bit to get a look inside rocks, which is a great substitute for a rock hammer, except when it isn't. On this episode of Mars Guy, in a quest to understand the enigmatic dark and light tone bands that look like layers from orbit, but not so much from the ground, Perseverance was sent to this small ridge of outcrop. Here's where it parked, and here's Mars Guy for scale. This is a pretty sporty location for a self driving rover, given the potentially tragic consequences if it overshot. But that band of dark rocks is a compelling target for possible clues to how the light and dark tone bands formed. Here's the view from Perseverance. One of the more dramatic scenes, it's documented at the end of a drive. The front wheel is indeed close to the edge, but actually perfectly placed for the work to follow. The view toward the bottom of the hill nicely shows the ripples of sand that clearly distinguish this place from Devon Island or Greenland, places on Earth that some mistakenly believe are home to perseverance. Even the drifted sand underfoot or wheel makes that case. But it's the rocks here that are of interest, emphasized by the view from Mascam Z. They fit the technical description chunky, which I used in the previous episode for the dark toned rocks in a band that stretches away from this location. The largest chunk here has a smooth texture and many holes of various sizes that could be from escaping gas bubbles in a molten rock, like you'd find in crater impact melt. Here's an example of impact melt breccia from the Apollo 17 site on the moon. Perseverance went to work in this location, deploying its robotic arm and using its rotary percussive drill with the abrading bit to create a smooth, fresh surface for the science instruments. This tool is used routinely and has successfully done its job dozens of times before. But this time it appears to have met its match, a rock that resisted being abraded. A normal abrading operation goes for about 20 minutes, like this previous one, which includes two tests of the strength of the rock before the drill commits to a full grind, all done autonomously. The current one lasted less than seven minutes. I suspect that the system sensed a problem and aborted the operation. I've experienced what it's like to use an abrading bit like this, which requires an apparatus to stabilize the drill against the strong lateral forces created by the asymmetric placement of the teeth, and that's necessary to avoid an unabraded spot at the center of the abrasion patch. Even with my apparatus, it's tough to keep the drill stable but it still does the job. The arm and stabilizers on Perseverance work much better though, and now I have a better appreciation for what that takes. After the failed abrasion on Mars, the close-up from the Watson camera shows that the rock was barely scratched. It also shows off the chunky texture. Perseverance used a blast of nitrogen from its gas dust removal tool to provide a clearer view. This helps reveal the gray colors that give the dark tone band its darkness, along with hints of the purplish coating that seems to be ever present. Zooming in closer, you can see a single spherule, a now common sight in the rocks of this area. They likely represent formerly molten bits of ejecta falling from the sky after the Jezero crater forming impact and the chunks with small holes are also consistent with molten rocks from this event. Perseverance backed away after these rocks resisted being probed any further, and it's now repositioned to investigate other rocks that may be more compliant. <laughs> 